Hello, it's Simon. Welcome back to Better Creating. Now, I have just finished building a complete custom email assistant for my Gmail account using Make. ChatGPT and Tally, and it's saving me hours in the week to look after my customers, who are much happier too. Now, if you run any kind of small business, sell digital products, run a side hustle, this could save you hours too, and it's all solved by one essential bit of tech, custom automations using today's partner, Make. I wanna show you the essentials of what you can do with Make to streamline your customer service or sales system. It's probably the best budget option I've found, and this is how it works. So here's the situation. As well as being a YouTuber, I sell digital products, mostly Notion templates, and that can result in a lot of customer emails that I want to service. The problem is, it's usually just me doing this, meaning I don't always have enough time to respond quickly to people, and it takes a lot of jumping between platforms to find the info I need in order to help them. So this super low budget email assistant does way more than just auto respond to emails. It has to be one of the best value and most effective do-it-yourself options out there to lower your workload if you have online customers. So number one, it uses ChatGPT to classify emails into categories like delivery issues or refund requests, update requests, technical support requests. I have 11 options in the automation. Number two, it then auto responds back to them with one of the 11 different responses that are needed so I can get back to the customer quicker. And then three, if needed, it sends them to a tally form, which they can fill in and send information back to me, which all turns up within the email string of where they inquired. Meaning I only need to look at it when I have all the information I need and I'm actually needed. That surely deserves a like, right? Go on. Now, if you wanna see the details of how to build out the ChatGPT classification bot, that is in my previous video in this series I've linked below for the details. In this video, I wanna show you the custom auto response stage to this automation and then those tally form responses, which are part of this process so that you can get some inspiration and know how to build something similar for your own solo project. And if you are someone who works with clients, you can also watch my video on how I've linked Make to my Notion CRM as well to add clients into it quickly and easily. So thanks again to Make for partnering with me on this project. Let's jump into the details of how this works. And I hope this inspires you to do the same and make your own email admin or sales management simpler. And don't forget, you can get a one month free trial with Make with 10,000 automations free to get you started via my link below if you wanna try this out. But they also have a bunch of other great automations listed within their template section if you wanna get started with a few other use cases. So let's walk through these automations. These are the tally response automations. And then this is the main email auto response automation. To start with, what we did was actually model this. I say we, I've been working with an amazing company called The Generalist Company and Tom has been helping me do all this stuff and teaching me how it works. We modeled all of this with a workflow in Figma. And this is where, for example, we put all of the details of what each email would say, what would happen if a form was populated, and then everything moves through it. So we've got all of the different possible requests that we might get, and then the actions we would take through each. And I think doing something like this really makes a big difference. And from there, we can then set to work creating the two automations in Make. Here's the build and the essentials of how to put it together. As I say, I'm not gonna go into details about the chat GPT element of this, but what you can see happens here is we watch emails in the system and then you will see we have plugged into the email classification assistant that we've created. You can see that in the previous video and it will look at the subject and text content to review that. We've also got a little filter here which filters out any replies so we're not doing the same process on anything that we've sent back. Then you have a tool which delays it. This is delaying it for about five minutes, just so that it feels a little bit more natural. We then have a router, which depending on the feedback that we get in terms of the output from this, in terms of what type of item it is, you will have, for example, if we look at a Discord request, you'll have the result from the chat GPT response and it sends that through the router, like an if statement to different classifications. Let's look at the Discord example. There it is. This is a Discord related inquiry about access to the community. If you bought my Life OS template, I click on Gmail and all this does is label the email as Discord related. So in the email, it would link it down to 
this Discord section in the labels. The next step, if we follow this along, is it immediately then, once classified, sends an email auto-responding to the client. So you can see this is all in HTML. I didn't really understand how to write HTML, but it's actually really easy once you've seen an example. And there are services like this HTML viewer where you can kind of test out what it looks like. So we've dropped it all in there so that you're able to build it in one of these free services. This is codebeautify.org forward slash HTML viewer. I'll link it below. It's a really great tool. You can use that to do this. Now, the reason we're using HTML in this way is that it then allows us to do things like drop a form in. Now, if you click on the page, you're also able to drop any of these items in as part of the text. So what we've got here is a link to the tally form. So if I just copy that, if I paste it in, we can see the tally form that the user will see, and it just has these answers. But we're also within that, one of the brilliant things about a service like Tally, it's free to use for most of its services to create forms. I absolutely love it. And the bonus of this is that you are able to also send hidden header data within it. So you can have hidden forms that will receive the email address of this person, the subject, the Gmail message ID, and so on and so forth. This all makes a huge difference. So if you wanted to copy how this works, you could pause the screen here and see this view in how we're dropping a form in. The rest is kind of just paragraphs and formatting to the body of the email. And again, you would use something like this HTML viewer to drop it in and build it like this, saying, look at this form. So people can then click on the link and go to the form. And for this version, I've got a group of different forms. Here are my workspaces. I've got a delivery issue form, a Discord related issue, refund related, support related, and an upgrade request. Those are the five forms that I'm using. Now, if you're a Notion user, creating a form like this will be very familiar. You simply just see a kind of block-based system. You can add new blocks. There's loads of different options to lay out here, some of them being pre-formatted, which is a really great way to do things. You just insert anything. It's all very, very intuitive to use. Now, what you're looking at in this section are hidden fields. So if you click on this, you drop this in, and these hidden fields allow me to then say, populate it with the content from those headers. So email, subject, Gmail ID, and email ID. All of those are what we were looking at back here, which we were feeding through from the system. This is one of my favorite features of Tally. It means that we can show Tally information, but the user at the other end doesn't have to see that happen. And what's great about this system, if I go back to my workspace, you can actually go really deep with this. You can create inquiry forms that will have variants. So if they answer a certain thing, you can then show further blocks and there's loads and loads of variations. So if you've ever said, for example, in a form, my reason was other, and then it shows another block saying, what is your reason? You could do that within Tally. So really worth checking Tally out for that reason. What I also love about Tally is we then got the ability to not only integrate directly with things like Notion with no third party, we can use Make directly. It's a first party connection, really wonderful to do that. But we also have a ton of other options that you can use with Make to link into the system. Not only that, Tally forms can also be embedded into your pages. So it means on a website, on a Notion page, you could drop these as you need them. So I'm a big fan of Tally, make sure you check it out. And under integrations, we can also see that I have some webhooks that are connected to this. And that is the next step of this automation. So it's pretty simple. The process would be build your Tally form, here, we would simply add a new send an email item that we would connect to the section that we've seen in the previous video. And then within that, you can link the email address of the sender and we've written auto response to the subject of the previous email. And you can see it says, you know, you should know this is Simon, AI Simon. I believe this is an inquiry about Discord. Here's a form to fill out, so on and so forth. And then I can share other details like general troubleshooting. So if I collect all of that and copy it and drop it into HTML, you can see the result of how this looks. Pretty good. So now we know that that is working. We now need to see that information come back to us within the email string. But first, if you're finding this valuable, make sure to get subscribed for more tech and productivity joy 
on the channel coming soon to make your life a bit easier. Now, the next stage is particularly satisfying for me because it's where a ton of my time has been saved. It's where the system shares all the information I need to help the customer in the right place in the email string. Now, here you can see what they would have put into their tally form. This is a demo. Tom hasn't bought a product. There's no actual answers here, but if this was a real purchase, you would see all of the results from my Lemon Squeezy platform. If you're wondering, I sell my products on a platform called Lemon Squeezy. It's a kind of merchant of record great sales platform, I really recommend it. So that's where I do this. Now, this is the second automation that does this. So what it will do here is I've created a webhook in Make using Tally. So we would create a new watch new responses. You would link this up, you could add a new hook, find the form ID, it would do all of that work for you, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera, and you can label it and then we end up with this view here. So it's watching the Discord related tally form. It will then, using the information from that tally form of the Gmail ID that you remember we passed through the system before, it will update the label in Gmail to be to review, meaning that when I'm looking at my emails, I will know that under, for example, upgrade requests, I've got one to review, I can click into it and see that it wants my attention. But not only that, it then jumps into this system. Now this is an HTTP form. And what we're doing is we're using the API to check against orders anything that is linked to the email that we'll have taken through from the first email and into the form. Now I'm not gonna go into loads of detail on this section, but essentially you have to do a handshake with the API. So there will be details on here. This is the documentation on Lemon Squeezy. It shows us what you need to put in to make a request and how it will accept and so on and so forth. So the main thing you need to do is make sure that you have the kind of key, the handshake to link it up. So in this scenario, we are looking to add using the bearer ID, which I'm not going to show you all of because it's a bit too private, uh, get authorization to check the orders. Now, one of my favorite features about Make is that it's one of, I think, the few platforms that use this no code approach that allow you to do these custom API calls. So that is one of the unique features that we loved about this because it means that you can do more bespoke things. And even if it doesn't support directly and at, at this stage, you can still work with it. So I'm loving that for being able to do this direct call to the API for Lemon Squeezy to get that information. This then will send the results forward into this email. So we then add another unit saying send an email and I'm actually sending an email back to myself. So back to the Notion email that is dealing with all of this. You can see the subject is a re. So the idea of putting that in there means that it will essentially, when you look into this, it will drop it back into the string. This is the only problem we found with this is that it doesn't always do that. There are other workarounds and I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments of how you can guarantee it to reply to that, but there you go. So we drop that in. And then in HTML, once more, we created a form to send this back to ourselves. If you want to see what this looks like, first of all, it is sending the form data from the tally form that we've linked in this thread, what they answered for each of those fields. And then it's drawing from that API link into Lemon Squeezy all the information from Lemon Squeezy. So anything that's coming back from the system. And there we are dropping the attributes of each of those order details into it. If there's a variant, what product name is and so on and so forth. And finally, down the bottom here, we're making sure that it links back to that email ID from the original source. That all means that when someone fills in the form, we are updating the tag on the email to say that I need to review it. We are checking the information they've given us from their email and to see what orders they have with Lemon Squeezy. And then we email ourselves back with the information. That means that Tom emailed me about Discord. I auto responded to him with this email and then he clicked on this form and filled it in. And then that form sent me all of his answers back and would have filled all of this in, in bold as well, with all of the results from the products that he had ordered. And it now means that I can respond. 
with ease straight back to him. Whereas before I was having to ask for their order number, wait, copy their order number down, drop it into Lemon Squeezy, check for it, find them, go back. It just took so much time. How powerful is that? Let me know what you think of this system in the comments. So I hope this is giving you some inspiration to start automating your busy work and streamlining your business as well. I can't recommend doing this kind of stuff enough. It's been a lovely learning curve and I really do feel like I've got more time and energy for the business. Make sure you try Make with a one month free trial via the link below with those 10,000 automations. And if you want to know why I needed to make all of this in the first place, you should go and check out my Notion Life OS and other smaller templates over at bettercreating.com. Another great set of tools to help you do more with less and escape that organizational overwhelm. But here's the thing, if you don't have the fundamentals of personal organization down up here, there's no automation or system that can help. So to that end, I recommend watching one of these videos next to find the best ways to stay stress-free with your work. Click on my faces, get subscribed if you haven't, of course. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye.